Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting the free spirit from Aetherfields by Awaken Realms. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to the third episode in this Aetherfield series. And today we are painting the Free Spirit, which is one of the characters that you can play as. So here we're just starting off with a Zenithal Prime and that's so that I can take a couple of pictures when I'm done priming and then use that for reference later on when I'm doing my highlighting and shading just to make sure that I get the brightest highlights in the right spot. So all I've done is just grab my black primer, hit it all over, then go to grey, hit it from a fairly high angle. I go from higher than 45 degrees. I find that 45 degrees covers a little bit too much with the grey. And then white from directly above. And as you can see, that just gives that look as though it's being hit from light from above and yeah I just took a couple of pictures so when I come to do my highlighting and shading I'll refer back to that just to make sure I get everything in the right spot. So before base coating as I always do I started by looking at the artwork for the free spirit just to see if I was going to be copying those colors directly or making little changes here and there because one thing that I find is that copying the artwork directly because it's in 2D form doesn't necessarily translate well onto a mini which is 3D and going to be sitting in the middle of the table because if you have a mini that has lots of similar colors for example once it's sitting in the middle of the table being seen from the distance of everyone sitting around the edge it can quite easily lose a lot of detail and that was going to be the case here because as we look at the artwork for the free spirit it looks really really cool like I really like the look of the character but there's there's lots of black leather and then a little bit of blue and brown in the wings so not a lot of color variety so I wanted to make some changes just so that some of those details could stand out a little bit more add a little bit more visual interest and just create some focal points so the first change that I'm making here is to paint the suit as more of a gray blue rather than black shiny leather and the first reason that I made that change is because shiny leather has very, very small highlights because it's so reflective. And at this scale, those reflections are going to be absolutely tiny and so they're going to be very, very hard to see. Also, being black, there's very little color variation in the shadows. And again, once the mini goes into the middle of the table, that's going to be hard to see. So I thought going with more of a gray blue, it would allow for more highlighting and shading to happen, more color variety. And so the details that are in the suit are going to be easier to see once people are sitting back around the edge of the table. And now here you can see I'm starting to work in some red elements as well. And I'm doing this as a way to break up the color of the suit because in the artwork, this is all pretty much one single color, which I don't think is very interesting to look at. In the artwork, it looks really cool, but I don't think it's going to work well for the mini. So I just picked out a couple of spots where I can work in some red. Red was a color that I thought would work well against the darker color of the suit. So you can see the kind of the under vest sort of part I painted red and now this material that's wrapping around I've painted this red as well I'm not exactly sure what this is supposed to be but I just thought it was a part that was worth picking out and the good thing about a color like red is that it isn't too out there that it's too eye-catching because I want the main focal point of the free, free spirit sorry, to be the wing and so I don't want anything to take away from that. So red seemed like a color that would work pretty well. You can see here I'm also using my ruddy leather on the boots. In the artwork again, it's just more that black leather kind of look and so I thought if I paint the boots to look like brown leather, it's just another way of breaking it up. So for the rest of the base coating, there's not too much to comment on. It's just that I'm picking certain colors to apply to certain areas to help pick out the details a little bit more so that when the free spirit is in the middle of the table, those details can still be seen. Mm -hmm. 
I guess a good thing to note here is the importance of keeping in mind what steps you're going to do down the track to a particular area. So for example, here how I'm putting the black wash down over all of the suit. I knew that I was going to be doing that when I was base coating. And you may have noticed at one point there when I was base coating, I added some misty gray or a light gray into the mix that I was using for the suit. And that's because I felt like it was a little too dark and I knew I was going to be putting the black wash over the top to start the shading and that was going to dark it even further. So adding that misty gray in lightened it up a bit, which meant that when the black wash went over the top, it didn't darken it too much. It still kept a little bit of the lightness to it. But I only knew to do that though, because I was thinking about the steps that I was going to be doing later on. And so that's just a really important thing to do, just to make sure that you can always be setting yourself up for the next thing that you're going to be doing with that particular part of the mini. So here I'm just starting to highlight the two different red areas. And all I'm doing is just going back to the Carnage Red, which is the red that I base coated with, and then adding in some Heraldic Red just to lighten it off a little bit. There's just a little bit of Heraldic Red in for the first layer. It's probably a 75, 25 mixture, I suppose. And all I'm doing here is just going around to any area that I think would get any amount of light and just doing this initial stage of the highlighting. And all of the parts that I leave as just the straight carnage red, which was the base coated parts, they will be what's in shadow. So rather than going back and trying to carefully paint in between all those little creases and things like that to try and create the shadows, I'm just not going to paint them. So now I'm going through for the second layer and I've just added in more of the heretic red. So we're probably closer to a 50-50 mix now. I don't know, there's not an exact ratio, but just each layer gets a little bit more of the heretic red. And then I just don't cover as much of the previous layer. So then there'll be some Carnage Red showing, then the 75-25 mix of the Carnage and Heraldic, and now we're up to more of that 50-50 mix. So each layer that I do just gets a bit more of the Heraldic Red, and I just don't cover as much area, and I just feather out each edge so when I cover the area that I want, I then clean off the bristles and then just feather the edge out in the direction towards the shadow. And that just creates nice smooth transitions so that you can't see really solid, sort of solid defined lines between each layer, just so that you get a nice transition from one color to the next. And this method of layering and just gradually building up to the colors that I want is probably one of the biggest ways that my painting has changed over my time in the hobby. So when I first started painting, if I was going to do highlighting and shading, I would do the base coat and then just mix up one shadow color and just paint it in where the shadows would be. And then one highlight color, pick out where I wanted the highlights to be. And that was it. There was no blending from one color to another. And what that meant was that obviously my highlights and shading looked awful because there were these really solid defined lines between say the shadow and the base coat and then the base coat to the highlight. But now though, by gradually shifting from one color to another, it makes it much, much smoother, but it also allows me to go much darker with the shadows and much, much brighter with the highlights and get much more effective contrast because you can gradually shift from one color to another. And so I think this layering is a really, really important thing to learn and develop if you haven't yet, because it really does let you boost that contrast, get a much greater depth of color, and it just adds so much to the overall look of the mini. So here I'm now on to highlighting the main suit that the Free Spirit is wearing. And all I'm doing here for the initial stage of the highlight is just going back to that same black, blue and gray mix that I used to base coat it with. Obviously after base coating the black wash went on, so that will be the shadows. But with this initial stage of the highlight, just back to that 
initial base coat color and I'm just picking out all of the areas that I think would be getting any amount of light. And then what I'll do for the second layer is add a little bit more of the blue and the gray in so that there'll be a little less black in the mix just to lighten it off a little bit. And then I'll go back and just pick out a smaller amount of area that'll be getting a higher concentration of light. And then I'm just going to keep repeating that process just each layer mixing in more of the blue and gray so it just gets lighter and lighter and lighter and just gradually reducing more and more and more each layer the amount of area that I cover with the paint just so that some of the previous color is showing and that'll just get a nice transition from the shadow through to the brightest highlight and while doing this I was referring back to the pictures that I took earlier where I did the Zenith or Prime just to make sure that I was getting the brightest highlights in the right spot. And just at this point here, I've mixed some misty gray in rather than the cloudy gray, which is a lighter gray, just for those final couple of stages, just to get it a little bit lighter. Now here I'm just doing a really quick and simple uh, worn tarnished leather look onto these different parts that I've painted ruddy leather. If you've seen a few of my recent videos, you'll have seen me do this a couple of times. If you want a proper explanation of what I'm doing here, go check out the hatchet video in the Jaws of the Lion series. But all I'm doing basically here is taking the skeleton bone, doing some dots and lines to create a scuffed look over the ruddy leather, then applying these three different wash colors over the top to get some tonal variation and to cover up the dots and scratches a bit then go back reapply the dots and scratches put another layer of wash and then finish with one more layer of the dots and scratches just to create a aged worn tarnished look it's quick and simple to do but pretty effective So with the Free Spirits helmet here, I wanted to spend most of my time working on the reflection on the visor. So for the main part of the helmet, I just mixed some black into my blade steel. So it has a metallic look, but it's quite a dark color. And now here I'm just base coating the visor. So I'm using my oceanic blue, which is a mid range blue, and that'll be a nice base for the light blue here, which will be the reflection. And then the darker blues, which will be the shadows to go over. And then I can blend those colors together. So starting off, I just took the light blue and I just painted a solid band of it right at the peak of the curve and that's where the reflection will be it's most concentrated in terms of brightness and now here I've just added lots and lots of water to the light blue to really really thin it down and this is now acting like a glaze so what I'm doing is I'm starting on the light blue and then painting away from it towards the oceanic blue and because the paint is so thin, each layer only makes a really, really small difference. And so I'm just feathering the edge of it out towards the ends of the of the visor. And then I'm just going back and starting again in the middle and then putting the paint down and then just blending it away from the peak, but just not quite as far. And after layer after layer, it just gradually creates a nice smooth blend. And now I've mixed some white into the light blue. And now I'm just really keeping this right to just the peak of the curve. And that'll just get a nice bright area right in the middle where it, it looks like the light is hitting the most and then it just gradually then blends away from there. 
And now we're onto the wing, which right from the start is the part of the free spirit that I wanted to be the main focal point. So I have changed the way that I'm painting this a little bit from the artwork, because in the artwork, the wing is predominantly brown, except for a little bit of blue up where you would imagine the free spirit's left arm being. So I've reduced the area of the brown and I've increased the blue. So I've kept the same colors, but this will just let me get a little bit more color variety and build up a little bit more contrast because rather than just doing a general shift from blue to brown across all of the feathers like it is in the artwork, what I'm going to do is a blend from a dark brown to a light brown or dark blue to light blue on each feather individually. And what that'll do is really help to bring out each feather on its own rather than just kind of a general blend from blue to brown, but also give a lot more depth of color because each feather is individually highlighted. And so now I'm starting the highlighting procedure. So I'm just taking the muddy brown, which is the base coat brown that I used. And I've mixed in a little bit of leather brown just to lighten it off a little bit. And then I'm just painting all of each of the feathers, but just leaving the top part of each feather exposed so that that's just the muddy brown. Then I did a few layers with the leather brown, just gradually painting less and less and less, just, you know, closer and closer to just the tip of the feather. And now I've gone to straight leather brown for working really close to the end of the tip. And now I've just mixed some skeleton bone in with the leather brown. And this is really just for the tip of each one, just to give that final boost of contrast so that you've got just the muddy brown at the base of each feather. And then it works through to a blend of leather brown and skeleton bone right at the tip and that really emphasizes that shift of color on each feather individually which really helps to bring out each individual feather and now i'm just going to do the exact same process with each of the blue feathers so i use my soft blue to base coat with and so now i've just mixed some lighter blue in with the soft blue and just doing the exact same thing just leaving the base of each feather unpainted and then just covering maybe, you know, 80 to 90% of the feather with the first coat, then mixing a bit more of the light blue in, and then maybe covering 70% of the feather, something like that. And then, so as it gets lighter and lighter and lighter, I'm just painting less and less and less of the feather, just keeping it closer to just the tip. And that just gives that nice smooth transition from one layer through to the next, which allows me to go brighter and brighter and brighter until just painting the tip where it's really, really light. And again, it gives that real solid boost to the contrast and helps to bring the color of each individual feather out so that each individual feather really stands out on its own. I was really, really happy with how this wing came up. Early on, I didn't have a really clear picture of how this was going to look. I knew that I was going to keep it brown and blue, but I didn't know exactly how I was going to be painting it. It was more sort of just as I kind of got to it, I then sort of made it up a little bit, and then I got a clearer picture of how I wanted, wanted it to look in the end, and I was really able to pull that off. The way that each individual feather stands out and has that nice blend from the darker color at the base through to the lighter color at the tip, I think the effect is really, really cool. And yeah, just really, really happy with how this came up especially with the time that went into it. There was a lot of time that went into doing each of those feathers. There was probably, you know, as much time that went into that as, you know, a fair bit of the rest of the mini put together. So the fact that I put that time into it really pulled off how I wanted it to look. Really, really happy. And I think it is a good focal point for the mini.
And so now at this point, the free spirit herself is done, and now I'm on to doing the base. Because of the dreamlike nature of the theme of this game, some of these minis do have some quite odd bases, and some of them I'm not necessarily sure of what they're actually supposed to be. The free spirits was one of them. So I think that's, you know, obviously deliberate. It's sort of left to be open to your own interpretation as to where these characters are standing, but it did make it a little tricky to sort of approach with painting it because I didn't know exactly what each of the parts was supposed to be. So there were some parts that looked like they were supposed to be metal, so I just used my bronze colour for them. The actual bottom kind of layer of the base kind of looked to have a wooden texture to it. So I painted it brown with my, and then did the Agrax Earthshade wash over the top just to bring some of that detail out. You can see I'm putting the black wash here over the metal parts just to tarnish them a little bit and take away some of the shine. And then I just painted the leafy parts green, did a bit of a highlight to them. And then there's a couple of birds on there. I painted them brown with a bit of a light purple highlight just to bring some of the detail out. Whether that's what it's all supposed to be or not, I don't really know. But that's just the way that I interpreted it. So just as I finish these last couple of parts of the base, we are going to call the Free Spirit done. So thank you very, very much for checking out another one of my videos. I really do hope you enjoyed it and found something useful in it that you can take away and use in your own painting. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to stay up to date with future videos as they keep coming out, please do hit the subscribe button as well. And also stop by the Twitter and Instagram accounts for this channel where you can see what I'm painting at the moment and so what future videos will be coming out and also if there's anything that you do take away from my videos whether it's a particular paint scheme or a technique or you just straight up copy how I've painted one of my minis please do take a photo of it post it to Twitter or Instagram and tag me in it because I love seeing how you guys are using my videos to help with your painting a few of you have already done that and I do love seeing those photos so please make sure you post them to there but we're going to leave it there, so until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.